everybody, it's Coach Stefan Rudolph coming to you from beautiful Escondido, California, out here with another beautiful day with three beautiful women on board here. Doing another <laughs> great, uh, great interview today as we're exploring nature, health, wellness, personal growth in our healthy group, the Holistic Epilepsy Awareness and Loving, Transforming and Healing Yourself. So we have another beautiful, great guest today, Rena, and I wanted to introduce Stacy and also Liz as well. So Stacy, take it away. Hi, so I, you know, I am a health coach and a life coach, and I am also an epilepsy coach, and I work with people uh, to teach them how to um, restore their, their health and to, to change their lifestyle and to help them with uh, teaching those uh, individuals how health and, and lifestyle changes can make a huge impact on our, um, our, our conditions and what we go through in life and how we approach things and even the clarity and how we focus and how our brain brain works. And I also work with people with epilepsy and teaching them how to help themselves um, and get started. You know, the, where do I start? Where do I begin? How do I control my seizures? What should I do? You know, and, you know, I, I help people, you know, breaking down the steps and making life an easier way to, you know, live and try and help them improve their overall health. Today, I'd like to introduce my coworker and good friend, Liz. And uh, <laughs> Liz is also a coach and and she uh, does a lot of different work for helping people with epilepsy. And here she is to share all those great things that she does to help <laughs> people in our society uh, improve their life and overall health. So take it away, Liz. Um, Stacy, I love you. Thank you. That's <laughs> wonderful. That put a big smile on my face. Hi, everybody. My name is Liz Nichols. And uh, my business is called Liz Nichols, a woman in motion. The main focus of my business is to provide coaching and resources for women with epilepsy. Um, I went through the experience myself, went through the good, the bad, and the ugly, and developed a uh, business, hopefully, to help others with epilepsy. Um, and so today, my good friend, Rena, is joining us. And I've got to tell you right off the bat, uh, before I introduce Rena, Rena has been instrumental in uh, my health journey. Um, I, I just can't even begin to tell you all the different things that she has done for me that have helped me um, along the way. And uh, we're just thrilled that she's here today. So I want to introduce Rena Bat. And uh, oh my gosh, I'll get her to share a bit about her, but uh, she's my definite go-to, one of my you know amazing friends that I feel very blessed and thankful you're in my life. Thank you, Liz. Um, well, I am a health practitioner who I do live blood cell analysis. I'm a certified uh, microscopist. And I've been, I started my journey when I was er in the early 40s, and I'm now in my mid 70s. So I've, be I've been doing this a while. And I gotta say, uh, honey, you don't look like you're in your mid 70s. So you're doing something right. I keep working <laughs> at it, right? Yeah. <laughs> you look great. Yesterday. Oh my Thank God. You. you stunned me when you said you're, you know, mid 70s. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> way. <laughs> yeah, I, I, well, I hope to be doing this until I'm in my mid 90s. But, you know, we, we got to get there first. <laughs> but I, in the process, I have. Uh, it's a, been a learning journey. It's been um, an amazing journey with my family uh, and many, many people all over the United States because I took that microscope up and down the pig trail in the USA with in a in a plane, in a truck, in a car. I've been to uh, you know Canada, I've been to obviously, and, and I've been to Hawaii and Alaska and all over the East Coast, Mexico with my microscope. So all these years. So I have seen a lot of blood under my microscope, and that is how I help people look at what their body is really doing on the inside and maybe what some of those habits and um, uh, lack of knowledge is doing to them. And I think that that's where I was in, the, in my mid-40s, lack of knowledge. And... Um, so that journey progressed. I have several uh, aha moments in that journey. Um, one being my own my own health. Um, I recovered, as Liz said, about osteoporosis. I recovered. I was losing my teeth. When your dentist tells you your jaw is not holding onto those teeth, this one's coming out and this one's coming out, I did lose some. And um, re recovered. And by the time I was 60, I said, I got to know. So I had my, you know, bones tested and I have no osteoporosis whatsoever. But <laughs> along with that, asthma gone. 
arthritis gone, um, infections, bladder infections gone. You know, I had so many things I was taking medications for, inhalers, you know, antibiotics, and, and all of that went away when I stopped doing, you know, certain things like soda and sugar and too much of a lot of things that aren't good for you. I never drank, I never smoked, but my body was really falling apart. And then my my husband's body was uh, injured and he was on medications, um, pain medications. And due to his alcoholic um, history, that was a very difficult thing to go through because his he became addicted to pain medications. And so that how do you do that? How do you fix that? Um, and nutrition, nutrition helped him overcome and um, and heal. And the pain went away. And he was able to walk. It's a long story, and I won't go into it. It's you can read about it on my website. But um, so, and then the microscope came in, and then all of that. It was. It's just been an amazing journey. Um, and but to. Today, um, because we are talking about, I want to talk about more about toxins and the central nervous system, because we just have been in, we have, we have no knowledge. People don't understand. That it, here's my water. And I know it does not have lead in it. I know it does not have mercury. In it. I got to know these things. And 100%. I moved to this little town about three years ago and because it's pristine mountain area, I I didn't wasn't I didn't drink the water at the time either. But I did some research, and this little town has high lead mm. in its water. And I tell everybody I know, because your children are drinking this, you know. And and I want people to know this and um, and see the and, and you can see things. You can see these toxins in your blood. One hundred percent. I wrote a book on purifying water because it's so important. People don't realize. So go ahead. It's yeah. you know this is something that's really big that people just drink the water out of their faucets. They they you know they don't purify it or even if it's, it is purified, even the bottled water still have toxins in it and have impurities in it. And people don't realize what that's doing to your body. And people don't realize they need to get those toxins out of their water before they put it ingested into their body. So Number one. They, you know, so maybe you can, you know, give people some tips today because I wrote it in my book because it was, you know, people don't realize what it's doing to your body when you constantly are going in the shower, it's going into your pores, you're drinking it, all these that toxins awesome. are going to your body. And, you know, after, a, you know, a short or long period of time, depending on a person's immunity system, they're coming up with different illnesses and different problems and they have no clue. And it could be something so simple like the water they're ingesting. So go ahead. Give the people, and tell people quick, what sorry, could happen. We grew up on that. All of us, I was drinking out of a hose as a kid, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah you know. We used to just drinking the faucet water and some people don't ever change. So yeah, keep going on that because that's a really good thing to reset your mind and reset your so life. Here's a, I have one story. I was up in Canada, in Merritt, BC, and it's off the grid, basically. It's a tiny little town. Um, they had invited me and my husband to do some speaking and, and me to do the microscope. And so I did oh, probably 20 people in two days where I looked at their blood and, and, um, and I didn't see any of this in it, waterborne bacteria that I normally see in the state. So I, until the last person and this young man who's 11 years old and the mom says we didn't know what's wrong with him because he's been a, such a good student and he's been an athlete and now all of a sudden he doesn't want to do anything and we, under, we don't understand the deal and I said well I don't know I never tell people I can see what I what the problem is I say let's just take a look right he had so much waterborne bacteria attacking his red blood cells attacking his red blood cells all over, there was no doubt. And I said, this is very curious to me because no one in the town so far has had any of this bacteria. Where, what water are you feeding this child? And she goes, oh, we go to a certain big box store. I will name, not <laughs> named stores. Um, and we buy a case, a large case of bottled water. And we put it in our garage, and then that's what he takes to school every day. 
and tell people what happens when heat hits the plastic yeah, exactly. bottles. Exactly. They, they, uh, well, first of all, you know, you've got the toxins from the bottle, but you've also increasing the element of bacteria growth in that water. If it's spring water or any kind of groundwater, no. And so I was able to say, don't worry though, because his body will recover naturally if you stop drinking that water. And in three months, these red blood cells will have died off and the new ones will have you know, um, populated. So he will be fine. And um, he was, by the way. But I, I can see aluminum in the blood. I, you know, so, um, and I only drink distilled water. I've drank distilled water for 30 years. And people say, oh, it's dead water. But I also put my own minerals in that distilled water to make sure. And this is a mineral that helped your bones as well. So that's right. part of my story. But um, uh, yeah, I think that we don't realize that there's other things in the in the water. But, uh, and, I, and I don't know where my husband got his toxins, but he was very high. We had him tested. He was very high in um, mercury and very high in lead. And is he a big fish eater? No. Well, yes, yes. Actually, we were we were big fisher fishermen. Um, he passed away, and he had ALS. And when I started doing the study on why, why him, his that we tested his nutrition levels, they were beautiful. His nutrition levels were beautiful. So you can have beautiful, perfect nutrition going into your body, but if there's a toxin in there interrupting it will not make any difference. Because certain fishes have such high mercury levels. The, the lower you go to the ground, the more, you know, mercury. They consume. Yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. Yes. So, um, but I didn't have high mercury levels and I ate the same fish. So we had to do a little bit of, uh, and, and like, you know, these are forever toxins if you don't know how to get them out. I was just going to say, maybe you were releasing those toxins, you know, you knew how to, and you were doing it more frequently and you were getting them out of your system versus maybe he oh. wasn't doing exactly the things that you were doing and they weren't releasing out of his body as quick. Or he maybe or, you know, pe people's bodies, their immune system, the oh, way they move, you know, some people, some people, yeah, some people, they can get it out of their system quicker, depending on their person's body. Everybody is different. Everybody's different. Nina, yeah. you've got an incredible story about your son. Oh, you um, want me to get started there? <laughs> oh, no, no. I mean, this, I, well, I guess I've talked to you all the time. So sorry to everybody there. But the story of your son and getting toxins out just is amazing. Um, are you comfortable sharing that now or? Oh, sure, sure, sure. Um, okay. Just to finish off with my, my husband's toxins, um, he had also had head injuries and a severe neck injury. So those injuries were a part of not being able to get the toxins out because of the, the his spinal cord was injured and there was just blockage too much going on and that's why he ended up with ALS which is not necessarily hereditary as they say anyway <laughs> so the reason I really got into the the toxin area is because my son has a condition actually a heart defect that is very rare and he needed a new heart and he was 40 at the time. And he, um, was, they were preparing him uh, for a transplant. So in the years prior to being 40, they, they had started that. And then at the very end, he was doing the one last thing, they checked the box off it, to put him on the list. And they said, oh, we are so sorry, but you can't be on the list now because your liver is too cirrhosis. And so um, when he told me that, I mean, it, was, it, it literally was a death sentence because his li without his transplant, we really felt that he only had a couple years left. He couldn't walk up a flight of stairs. You know, he was in trouble and he would have to quit work and all this would be bad, right? So um, I went to work and looking for something that would detox the liver. Um, and it, uh, just... It, it happened that I found a friend who was selling a product that was for that. So I looked into it. I read all of the research and I said, well, if this stuff works, I'm, I'm on board. So I sent the product to my son. Um, and three weeks later, he came and he started it. Three weeks later, 
he came to my house, which is a three hour drive. It's not a big deal. And we did his blood. And normally I can see liver. I can tell you if you've got problem with your liver in the blood. I hadn't yeah. done his, I hadn't done his blood for a year or so. So I didn't know what his blood looked like before, but I did know that after three weeks on this product, his liver was not looking as they said. And so three months later, he had an annual exam and they weren't expecting to see much because, you know, his last year prior to that, it was so awful. Um, and I was there. So I got to see the ultrasound and the livers testing and the um, he had blood testing and he had a stress test. And one more thing. Oh, his device, because he has a defibrillator and a pacemaker. So the, the pacemaker person says, well, wow, you haven't been using it. You're your defibrillators. We're going to have to turn this down because your body's not need, not using it. That's interesting. And we right. they wanted to use him for, as a case study because, oh, what, what, what happened here? Yeah. His, uh, cardiologist comes in and says, well, I don't know what you're doing, but this is last year's ultrasound and this is this year's ultrasound. These do not look like the same heart. Wow. And the liver person said, Wow, I, I I know I didn't misdiagnose, but your liver looks so much. I can't believe this, right? People so uh, then, suggest that you do a, a liver cleanse at least once a year. You know? Well, we do a liver cleanse every day. Okay, that's <laughs> it's, fine. It, it's a it's a deal that you do. And anyway, so then he goes out for a stress test, which he failed miserably a year prior. And he's going and he's going and he's going. And he had people coming in watching him. He said they couldn't believe it. They just could not believe it. He has been working hard. He works physically harder than anybody I know. And with this heart that was going to be a done deal uh, a couple years ago. So he's been on the product for three years. That's and um, it's, it's an amazing, um, if I'd have known about this back when my husband was ill, maybe, maybe, you know, you always wonder what could have happened. Right. Right. But uh, no, I'm on a little bit of a mission, um, not just for my family, but to help other people uh, figure it out. Um, doesn't always have to be looking at the blood because I can see before and afters with um, all kinds of products, not just necessarily my own, um, you know, enzymes and minerals and all kinds of things. So right. um, I like to, you know, learn and then pass that education on to others. That's what I like to do. And the thing is, Buddha, Buddha, if, if it's if it's an area and we look back and you everything happens for a reason and that's an amazing story because the doctors were not used to this it wasn't oh. in their books i was in pharmaceutical sales and i heard a lot of this like this is what we tested this is how it works and then something goes different they're like how did this happen and especially holistically right when we yeah. change something and it's not according to the books they're like this isn't right he's yeah. supposed to die or this is supposed to happen statistically and you're like the 1% of the 1%. And, you know, <laughs> I've lived when on we that. Were, I love that. My husband and I were skiing after his accident. And, uh, you know, he had been not quite in a wheelchair, but he had, he needed help to go and do anything. And um, his doctor um, was at the ski hill. And he just says, whoa, 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 what are you doing up here? He goes, Doc, <laughs> do you believe nutrition heals? And Doc said, well, Bill, if you believe it, that's all that matters. Hello. You know, that's what my doctor said to me. He goes, he goes, you know, he, my seizures were getting controlled and then they finally were controlled. And he said, you know, I was telling him holistically what I was doing and, you know, and he just looked at me, he goes, you know what, Stace, if it's working, keep on doing it. You know, that's all he had to say, you know, just I, keep I'm on saddened. doing it. Does that make you sad a little bit, right? That they, they won't make that there's so many are now people you know, MDs are, are crossing the little border, the land, the line, you know, a little bit more, but I think some doctors imagine. are actually, you know, they're actually a little bit more open now, now that they see that CBD and medical marijuana is working for epilepsy, they're starting to move more towards, you know, holistic healing and natural healing, and they're starting to see it. And my doctor for years was trying to, you know, make people realize that, you know, that different things like medical marijuana and CBD could actually help epilepsy. And mindset. Know? And mindset, oh, huge, <laughs> mindset is huge. 
Yeah, okay. most, most seizures are caused, you know, are, one big trigger is, is stress. So if you heal the mind, you know, that could take a huge, you know, make a huge difference in the number of seizures you have a month, you know, along with other things. If you see people and they get sick and they give up on themselves, have you ever noticed that their time frame automatically they just go downhill really quick when they give up on life? And I've seen yeah. that so many times. So if you have a will to live, look at breast cancer, the community in breast cancer. Those people who get breast cancer, I would say a good majority of them over in the 90 percentile want to live. They think, they can beat it they're going to survive and do they survive yes they do and why do they survive mindset <laughs> i think we're all on the same page here yeah mm -hmm. well I, yeah I, I have a list and i was going through that with epilepsy what did i eat what did i drink every time i had a an aura a small mall mm -hmm. i would ask myself you know oh i just drank monster or i had this candy or and then it would kind of go go away after a while and i'd be like that's great and so just keeping track of what your diet is right oh yeah big i had ice cream last night and didn't sleep very good at all well that sugar <laughs> Woo, you were on the go <laughs> I went up and, then I... <laughs> and then you crashed once all that sugar left your system and this morning like... i woke up and going i i don't i don't drink have a hangover do i <laughs> ice cream I, well, I honestly i woke up today and i saw this and these aren't usually i know it's not going to make a difference to you, but you know when you look in the mirror your eyes are a little bit more baggy yeah and i'm like i had some carbs last night and i did i had some bread i had some, and i accepted it a little inflammation and i Wait. usually don't have it so the next morning i could totally notice a difference and i feel a little our more body more. tells us oh yeah I'm talking to us all the time and people don't listen to their when own you, body they say when you get tired after a meal that's because your body is having a hard time breaking down that food so if your body is having a hard time breaking down that food obviously that food is not too good for you and maybe you should reconsider altering your diet and maybe not including that in your diet because your body gives you signals all the time the problem is people don't realize it or they're not educated enough because people haven't trained them to look for those signs and our body is always telling us when it's a good thing or a bad thing it's just understanding your body listening to your body and then following what your body is telling you to do because it tells you what to do all the time we just don't pay attention to it you're right all right you are I'm talking to my body all the time. I know. <laughs> the older you get, you're like, what's what's that spot, right? Yeah, you're, you're walking in this room, you're like, what should I do? You know. I started saying you know, it to my funny. body all the time. I said, there's no body like your body. You're not like anybody. You're not like somebody. You're not like everybody. You're the one body that matters most. I so love I said, Break it down, huh? I love that. I love that. Well, and we all have our ups and downs. I don't care whether yeah. you know you're not going to be up all the time. No, you have to recognize, you know, where you're at. And yeah, and it was, I was eating a great big hamburger, and I don't eat beef generally, right? Right. But boy, that that smelled good at that restaurant. I decided to eat it, and I had seven of my girlfriends, and they are all sitting there being really good eating their salad. <laughs> 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 and they took a picture because I was like, what is she doing? And I said, you know what? Seven days a week, 12 months a year, I'm good. Yeah. I allow myself. Well, they say, so, you know, in moderation, you could have anything, you know, once in a yeah. blue moon, you know, it, but yet it's like either, you know, it's the people who constantly do that every day. And then the people who do it every once in a while, moderation is okay. You can go out, you could have a, you know, something that you're really craving and, and like, as long as you're not doing it consistently on a daily basis, it's okay, you know, because you can't be good all the time because you know what, people get sick of being good all the time. And that's where people fall. So it's like, like when it comes to food, you know, it's okay to, to, you know, have things in moderation, as long as you know, when, you know, you've had enough and as long as you know, you know, what your limits are, you know, and, and going by that. Well, they, they considered me a, a kind of a get it, goody two shoe when it comes to health. <laughs> so I had to prove to them that I don't always, I don't always follow every rule all yeah. the time. You know, you got that super duper hamburger that has everything on it with all the sauces <laughs> and everything you could imagine. <laughs> I know it was bad. It was bad. But, uh, you know, that's what I like. I like with the ice cream, me and this other health now were sitting there like, how often do you get to do this? I said, almost never. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's why it's so important to get the toxins out. Like, 
I know I need to improve my eating habits, right? Last night we were out for wings and, you know, they're, uh, I ordered the non-breaded ones, but uh, <laughs> you, know, the, you know, the wings are just I'm going to be bad. Enough. I go for the breaded ones. I say, screw <laughs> it. And I just do it that one time, you know, <laughs> Yeah. But but, I do but, detox every day, you know, so yeah. and it works for me and, yeah. and, and I feel great, you know, in the morning I have energy galore, you know, and when I'm feeling fatigue, I'm like, okay, what am I doing? Why am I feeling fatigue and how can I improve it? Yeah. You know, Is it, why, it, am I dehydrated? Um, have I eaten something, you know, just like Stefan was saying, he says, I know what I eat. And I, if, if I remember, well, I think if I remember, because yeah. I, should, I should remember what I ate yesterday. But, uh, well, no, I I, I'm lucky I if I can remember. I ate that caused memory loss. So I'm like, oh, I yeah, ate too much crap. <laughs> <laughs> and there you go. You know, as we get older, as I mean, you want to be in, you know, full, uh, full steam ahead. You don't want to have to, uh, pull back the reins yeah. uh, I'm so excited I'm I won't say I'm still skiing I didn't get to ski last year but um downhill skiing with my granddaughters has been just one of the most Im important things in my life and I'm going not a lot of people at my age there are some oh, that's impressive. That do that and um hopefully I mean we've got a, a trip planned to Austria that we're going to go skiing with their the family. So well, I give I, you kudos because when I, I went, the one time I went skiing, I almost ran over two two-year-olds and I said, never again, oh, uh, never again. I'm like, <laughs> I, I go like, ah! You know? <laughs> well, I've been skiing all my life. So it's been one of those uh, uh, things that you, it's a part of me. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. I don't think well, tennis and I don't play golf. Now, Rolling into the, your next step, uh, you have a book maybe, or what's, what's upcoming for you in the next year? What's upcoming for, I'm sorry, oh, I part of that. Business for how you're helping people in general. Um, what, what are your plans? What do you see? Well, I, I think what I would like to be able to do is to do some online blood uh, demonstrations. I have a few in YouTube, and I, and, but I want to kind of uh, show that part of, of how you can look at your body and how you can. And then it, it really gets people thinking, um, even if it's not their body, they're saying, really? They do oh, this and this. One hundred percent. You drink soda. We, I had a little situation in Hawaii where these uh, mother brought three kids, and one kid was a friend, and um, the uh, her two kids were like kids should look, and this other child had really ugly blood. And I'm saying, oh, what, what do you like to drink? And she goes, oh, I like my Pepsi. And I said, well, these little children don't drink Pepsi, and that's why their blood looks like. Yeah. Lesson learned. I, I would love to go into the classroom, you know, into the children's classroom. And I can take Pepsi, my personal self, look at my so blood. It's so bad look, for you. Looks awful. Looks awful. But then I can take something else that re clear that up. And it's usually a water. So, <laughs> well, you know what? I say there's a, a thing that one of the, my great uncles used to do is that he used to take a little glass and he used to put Coca Cola in it and he would put a penny in it. And then a couple hours later, the penny would be disintegrated. <clears throat> so, if, it could, if soda can dis disintegrate a penny, how bad do you think it could be on your body? And I always suggest, I go to a functional medicine doctor and I always have blood work done because you don't know, as we get older, we become more deficient in certain vitamins and nutrients and we don't realize it. So unless you have a, like a functional medicine doctor or a doctor who believes in checking about vitamin deficiency, what supplements, what things in your body that you're deficient in, then you could actually figure out what's going on in your body. Are your harm hormones balance? What vitamins are you deficient in? What doesn't look right that you're on the borderline, but you know what? We could fix it or tweak it if you take this vitamin or if you take this supplement. You're okay right now, but in a year or two, you might not be because it doesn't look too good. And then, you know, that functional medicine doctor or a doctor who believes in that stuff and knows what to do, you could work with that, that person and actually improve your health. Like I, when I started going to a functional medicine doctor, my hormones were all off the bat wall because I was going through premenopause at 39. So, you know, and my vitamin deficiencies were low and all of a sudden she did all this blood work and she's like, Hey Stace, you know, look at this. And, you know, within three months of taking the right vitamins and doing the right supplements and going on hormone therapy, 
I was feeling terrific. Like if I tell you, I, I had my so much fatigue that I didn't even want to get out of bed. And just by knowing what I was deficient in and by taking the right things, I was feeling like a new person. I, I felt like, you know, within a year, I felt like I, I had my body that was 10 to 15 or 20 years younger because that's how I felt energy and strong wise. So like you said, blood work is very important. You, that's the only way you can figure out what's going on is by doing blood work. Got my granddaughter a little microscope. It's not like mine. <laughs> We're going to be looking at stuff under the microscope. Here That's the awesome. Next. I love uh, that stuff. Uh, yeah. pass, pass it along. And, and, you know, she always wanted to be a doctor and, and I'm not a doctor myself, but um, it might Keep encourage her. Keep her. Yeah. might be a functional medicine doctor. <laughs> Wouldn't yeah. that be great? That'd be so you know, great. Rena, one of the wildest things, I don't know if we got time now, one of the wildest stories you ever told me, your most intriguing stories, was the mold story. I, I still keep thinking about that all the time, about the blood, your blood before and after and finding mold you didn't know you had in your house and all the toxins and how important it was to detox. Uh, I just, I'm still blown away. I can be brief uh, because it's actually my most current story because this just happened in our, in our own house. And um, we didn't know that when we moved in, there was already some mold growing under a carpet and wow. then there was a, and there was a flood and we ripped up the carpet not i i have helped other people with mold issues uh through looking at their blood and and you know, giving them certain enzymes and things to help them however i didn't know how serious it is to not touch and be involved with that mold and i'm ripping up the carpet and i crashed I was normally, and I looked at my, first thing I did was look at my blood and I could not believe how infested my body was. So um, I did a, a few things and I, I, I charted it with my microscope and my own blood. Um, I do have um, a, a, a timeline in my own blood story that I can also share and show you. But their mycotoxins are neurotoxins. They're not just general they get into your brain and they destroy your nervous system yeah so uh i didn't want that to happen so i was like on it and uh, triple dosing and and um you know getting the air purifier and cleaning and da 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 uh had it professionally removed but that doesn't mean it's gone it's in your body now that it's in there how do you get that out well you gotta yeah. work you gotta work out and it, and it's probably not out all the way um it's been a few months but i have had some really um, good results with my own body and more people don't even know they're that's what's wrong with them they yeah. have, they don't know they've got mold in their house or if right. they do they don't think it's that bad you know oh gee there's a uh, there was a drip in my and there's mold over there but that's it's a it's a big deal i'm sorry oh it's, it is it's a very huge deal, deal. and the, time for, you see the drip it's it's already hu a huge problem and my, one of my good friends from high school, he has a restoration business, by the way, flood damage, restoration. And he mm -hmm. told me, I was working with him in sales and marketing at one point. He says, don't use that M word, he said. Don't mention mold. Because when you're talking to property managers or homeowners and you say, you might have mold in here, it freaks them out. People get mold because they know what's going on. You, there's other words, terminology he used, but it's so, uh, you don't know until you actually see it on the walls. And by that time, you've had it for years, he said. And there's two types of mold. There's there is black mold and you have the green mold and, and it's it's huge. It it could break down and destroy your body like you have no idea. I had I was probably going through a Kleenex box a week, every week. I mean I'm I, I buy it in, in a case. I have not had to use Kleenex. I used to keep it in all my pockets in my car. I mean my note my my face, my nap, my not I used to have rashes. I mean I did a, a inter not an interview, um a a survey about it, and I had 27 uh, symptoms of 36. 27 of the 36 symptoms, I had them. And they, in this um, test, they said, you need to get professional help for my book, for my mold. So I said, well, you know what? I think I can handle this. <laughs> And it's scary because if there's one little piece in your home, it's it still grows. It's yeah, like it you know, it's it's just like the lucky bamboo, like you know. And then the, it's in the dust. It's in the it's dust. In the it's dust. Your vacuum yes. cleaner. It's it's in your vents. It's in your everywhere. 
It's in your curtains. It's in your house everywhere. Yeah. Where so Rena, the difference between, I mean, just, you know, we talk fairly often and how much better you have gotten since you, you found out about it and started. um, I couldn't couldn't complete a sentence. My brain was, we were just talking about brain fog. My brain was much and I couldn't even, and I was in in a point of being almost depressed. I went off of all of the internet. I I just couldn't even put a sentence together on my website. I just couldn't do it. So it's it's a big deal. And as we get older, we've accumulated and accumulated, and then we eat our sugar and we do things that make it worse. You know, we just don't even know we're making things worse. So yeah. Yep. We're talking the same. Yeah. It's, it's all across the board. It's it, There's so many things we can do to help ourselves. We just could narrow it down because people, you can't just broad, like shotgun your health and say, oh, I eat well, I sleep well, and I don't drink and I don't have drink the alcohol and I don't smoke. There's so much more to it. Awareness and attitude, awakenness, awareness and attitude. So you awaken to an idea like people are going to hear this and hear about you. And they have to awaken to it. They have to become aware now daily of what they're eating. You know, why do I feel like this? Why am I depressed this morning? Why am I well, if you If you have something wrong with you, there's a root cause. And it, it's figuring out the root cause. You know, everything goes down to the root cause. And it's it's figuring out that. And the first thing I say is is blood work. That's, you know, science-wise, you know, it, I, I am a holistic person. But, you know, I incorporate holisticness with science because the two together are are very powerful. And the first thing to do, I suggest to someone if they're not feeling good, is to go to a, 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 a functional medicine doctor or a doctor who believes in alternative medicine is willing to give you that type of blood test where they check everything in your body from 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 your from your, from your forehead to your toes and they check out everything. And that will give them a very good idea of what's going on. And then they can, you know, and then we can talk about diet and we can talk about your lifestyle and we can talk about all that stuff. But the first thing a person needs to do if they're not feeling good is to go to a functional medicine doctor, go to a doctor who is experienced in, you know, um, you know, holistic, you know, living and experienced in, you know, figuring out what's going on. And then from that point, you could figure out the next step and the next step and the next step. Good advice, Stacey. And to have a resource for them. Some- yes. Uh, resources are really important because people don't know where to turn. Oh um, yeah. 100%. And, yeah. Can't hear Liz. I think she's talking. All right. So, you know, we're <laughs> oh, going to yeah, have-, have it on mute sometimes. I, I forget because I've got, I wanted to show you this real quick. It pertains to what we're talking about. Look at this. We have the little baby ducks out here mm-hmm. in this lake, and, and the moms, you know, taking them around. Now it's been very, it hasn't rained much out here. So the moss is growing as <laughs> we're talking about all these deep toxic toxins and stuff. And I'm watching these ducks that are usually in this beautiful clear lake. And now it's all the moss and, and mold starts to grow. I don't know, just things in my mind kind of came through as the mom's leading her, her, her um, ducklings around. And now they're feeding off this, but we don't know what we're eating. So with awareness, again, you know, and education that you give people, that's amazing that you're helping so many people out there, especially mothers and kids and everything. And yeah. grandmas and grandmas. And grandmas. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Great grandmas. So I have to, I have to get going, but before we close this meeting, I want you to tell people how they can find you, what you could do for people, you know, any upcoming events you have, any books that are coming out or anything that you have that can help people, you know, get to the point of feeling good and improving their overall health. So how do we find you? What are you doing? And give us all that great information that you have. (laughs) Well, naturally I'm uh, on Facebook. It's Rena, R-E-N-A. B-A-T-T, bat, B as in boy, A-T-T, and you love to be your friend, and then I can invite you to my group page, so it's mostly all educational, and um, a few stories, you know, something to think about, and then I also have a website, it's a blog, it's just renabat.com, and uh, that's also educational, Um, and I do share uh, People invite me with my microscope. I'm, I, I live in central Washington, um, so I I don't fly a lot because it's a, I have to drive three hours to the nearest airport. 
<laughs> anymore because I used to live right 15 minutes from the airport. So I don't travel as much as I used to, but uh, look for me on YouTube, rena.bat at YouTube. That's me. And I talk about alkalinity and toxins and a host of information and show pictures and I have videos on flood. So um, just chime in. And um, if you have questions, I'm happy to answer or find a resource for you. That's great. Thank Amazing. you so much.